and you know. Um, and I'm going to start with why. Uh, asking the question, why? Why am I willing to get up here uh, in front of you guys and expose myself? I mean, basically uh, sharing my testimony is kind of like getting up in front of everybody naked, you know. I mean, it is. You think about it. You're exposing everything. Uh, you know, I mean, nobody wants to get up in front of a crowd naked, you know. So, um, but um, it's because I'm I'm part of something that's that's bigger than I am. Um, it's, it's because I'm willing to expose myself so that you may have a better life. That uh, you know, believe it or not, you guys, I'm you. What, 25, 30 years ago? Yeah, anywhere from that, 30 years ago. I'm 45. You know, you, you, you won't think about that if you say, 45, I'm never gonna make it to there, you know. I didn't think I was either, you know, but I have, so. Um, you know, and it's because, because of the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Um, I was saved when I was 12 years old. Um, I, I know I had salvation. I can, I can tell you the night, it was a Wednesday night second week in August. I mean, I can tell you definitely when it was. I know I had it, but um, I grew up in a group of churches that we did not have Sunday school. We did not have youth group. We didn't have any kind of mentoring. We didn't have any kind of leadership in the church. We were taught salvation and nothing else. And I tell you that just to tell you the background I come from. You know, the church that I went to met once a month. And then you had another group of, you went to a group of basically four to five churches and each church had a Sunday service. And so you went to four different churches. And you know, so I didn't have a good background. I don't blame anyone. Uh, I take full responsibility for my past and my future because uh, you know, although I didn't know about the Bible, I knew the things that I was doing was wrong. You know, they were, they were definitely, you don't have to know the Bible to know these things that, that we do is not what you're supposed to be doing, you know. As I moved into my junior and high school years in school, I grew up made in sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, that's where it was at. You name it, and I have probably tried it. Uh, so, you know, nobody's got one up on me here, I promise you. Um, you know, I thought those things would, would uh, be fun and exciting. But those things keep you in trouble, cost you money, create problems, heartaches, and disappointments. After high school, I continued to party, not attending church. Uh, you know, we only met once a month. I didn't, you know, you could miss three Sundays and be okay as long as you hit it one Sunday, you know. Um, and, you know, life was okay, uh, but, you know, I just kept. You know, in the back of my mind, I kept saying, man, there's something else. There's, there's something better out there than this than this lifestyle. Um, I was working a job, making good money, but I was constantly broke, you know. Did, you know, it was just the same routine. Got up Monday morning, you went through the next week, it was the same broken record, you know. Um, I just then decided to, to quit work and to go to college. This was a, a step in the right direction but I was far from the right path. Um, I was still partying, you know, I was, I was still going from relationship to relationship, uh, still not attending church, you know, I was far, far from it. Um, I then finally met the love of my life, uh, my soulmate, um, Lori, who's sitting right here. We began to date, and there was something very different about this lady. Uh, she was different than she loved me uh, very much for who I was and she completed me. One year later, uh, we were married and we moved to Birmingham. Uh, things were good, but we were struggling uh, financially, lots of stress. I was in school, uh, you know, we were, we, was, we were scraping, you know, and a lot of stress of uh, that and uh, very little church, you know. We still, we, we still were not in church. We would occasionally go, but not much. Uh, you know, it was very rocky, uh, especially for Lori, because I was gone all the time, because I was, at that time I was in dental school then. Um, I was studying late. You know, we were married, but we were essentially living in divorce. Um, we kept moving forward and stayed together by God's grace and, and Lori's good cooking, you know. <laughs> kept me around, you know. Uh, you know, 
Um, I graduated dental school. Things got a little better. Um, we had a little bit more money, and and I thought that would that would solve all my problems in life. You know, I thought, hey, you know, money money can cure anything. Money can buy anything, so to speak. Uh, it can to some extent, but you know what? I, I learned um, money creates as many problems as it solves. You know, it, it's it, it doesn't necessarily help anything at all. Uh, what I have learned, it can become your god, just like anything else can become your god. Facebook can become your god. Cell phone, sports, uh, anything in life can become your god. You know. Uh, so I wasn't searching for the right thing. We did begin to attend church, and, and more and more, we were becoming regular churches. You know, we show up on Sunday morning. You know, we kind of went through the motions. Um, but I was attending church for the wrong reasons. Uh, it was because I was supposed to go. Uh, I've learned that you know that's not necessarily why you go to church. You know, I thought it was. I thought it was because you're supposed to go on Sunday morning. You're supposed to go to youth, you know. That's not it. Um, I was going for religion, not a relationship with Christ. Uh, Lori and I began to notice, though, that, you know, the more we were in church, the closer we got to Christ. Hey, you know, things things seem to be better. You know, it, it improves your life, you know. Um, it, and, you know, it, it. so we kept going. You know, there's a, there's a saying in... Uh, Celebrate recovery. You know, you get your chip. They ask. They say, "Who's, who's, uh, who's been on this journey for six months?" You know, if nobody gets up, they say, "Keep coming back." You know, so that was what we were doing. We we kept coming back. You know, because we knew there was something there. You know, um, and, and um, you know, I've now been in church consistently for for uh, more than fifteen years, but it wasn't until about a year and a half ago. Uh, I realized the freedom and release of being close to Jesus Christ, having a relationship. Um, part of the freedom uh, comes from realizing the sin in your life. We all have it. Every one of us sitting here, adults included, uh, we all have sin in our lives. But it's it's re realizing this and identifying it within yourself. You know, it's so hard to do to do self-examination, you know. You know, it's so hard for me to get up in front of a mirror and say, my gosh, you got an ugly head, you know. <laughs> That's not easy. That's not fun to do, you know. But we've got to do these things to grow, to get up, you know, to, to realize yourself, hey, I, am, I, I, deal, I, I deal with issues. I need to deal with them. I need to release these things, you know. Um, you, you know, I challenge all of you to do this, adults especially, uh, you know, you will never experience true happiness, freedom, joy, and release until you do this. Um, when we look at this too, you know, a lot of people say, hey, don't, you know, let, let's, let's not uh, dig up the past, and that's true. Don't worry about uh, where you've been as much as where you're going. It's so funny, I, I, at the last moment before I was leaving this afternoon, of course it was not funny, it's a God thing, Last moment this afternoon, I had I had ordered this book and gotten it in. It's, it's Tony Evans' a Kingdom Man, and I just I grabbed this. I don't even know why, you know. But I, I after about three pages, I turned to this, you know, and it says a Kingdom Man leaves the past behind. We can also say Kingdom Woman in this situation, okay? Do um, you know why a car's windshield is bigger than its rearview mirror? It's because where you're going is a lot more important than where you've been. The Apostle Paul knew this fact. He had a, he had a regrettable past, but through Jesus Christ, his future was glorious. In Philippians 3.13, 3, Paul writes, Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward on what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Um, you know, all of us have a past, the good, bad, the ugly, but that was yesterday. That was the past. Whenever I go back, you know, and revisit these things, uh, you know, it, it's okay to revisit some things, but don't dwell there. You know, it's not saying that yesterday's a bad conversation, but don't get stuck there. You know, yesterday defeats 
uh, excuse me, yesterday's victories will not carry you through today. Yesterday's defeat should not dominate tomorrow. Remember, if Satan can keep you looking back, then he can keep you from moving forward. Um, so, let's end with why. We started with why. Let's end with why. You know, why do I have this true happiness, freedom, joy, release? Is because of surrender. You know, I learned this at, at Celebrate Recovery. <clears throat> you know, surrendering. Uh, I, it's so funny. We learned this one night from a guy that had been in federal prison seven years, you know. And I never had thought about this, but when people raise their hand in worship, you know what this is also? It's surrender. What happens when the cops get you? What do you do? You raise your hands. But when you surrender to Christ, it's totally different, you know. You've stopped the running. You're ready to move forward with things. Um, it, 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 surrender is finally realizing that I am running from God and his control of my life. Uh, we all run from God and his control, some longer than others. You know, I ran for a long time, you know. Um, some will always run. Some will never, you know, some will never surrender. Some will never give up. Once you surrender, you'll experience a peace like no other. No drug, no person, no money, no possession will replace. Um, is my life perfect? Far from it. Um, but once you truly find the peace of Jesus Christ, the things of this world will fade away. Um, I tell you these things not to bring any attention to me, but only to bring glory to Jesus Christ. Thanks, Alfred.